All right, man, peace. You know, brothers, as I sit back here and think about it, I do believe that Kawhi Leonard 10 years from now will be viewed as the person who took down the San Antonio Spurs dynasty. I have very little doubt about that. And the reason why I say that is because he reminds me a lot of Deion Sanders. He reminds me of Deion in this way. The San Francisco 49ers were the most dominant team in the NFL for about a 13 or 14 year period. And at the end of their reign of terror across the league, they were led by the quarterback Steve Young, who I've always thought was a bit overrated in how people esteem him. He was a very proficient quarterback, but he did not perform well in the clutch or in crunch time moments. He just didn't. And I think the 49ers even understood this because they tried to implement a stimulus package by signing Deion Sanders, the mercurial cornerback of the Atlanta Falcons, and he was exactly what they needed. But anyone could tell that Deion just did not fit into the culture of the San Francisco 49ers. Even though they were based in the Bay Area, they were a very conservative franchise. They were ran like a military unit between Jerry Rice and Joe Montana, led by Bill Walsh. They had a lot of militaristic tendencies that trickled over into the tenure of the next coach, that being George Seifert. But the 49ers were desperate because they just could not defeat the Dallas Cowboys. They had lost to them in two straight NFC Championship games, and they knew that they needed another player, especially on the defensive side, particularly a Deion Sanders, who they could put on Michael Irvin one-on-one. Then they could circle some of the coverage over to the other side to stop Alvin Harper from beating them deep. And then they hopefully would be able to, to limit Emmitt Smith and his impact rushing the football. Deion Sanders was that perfect guy. But we all knew that he was not going to last long. And when he left the 49ers, that pretty much symbolized the death knell of, of their reign, of their rulership in the NFL. Because they were the most dominant franchise for about a 14-year period. Well, Kawhi Leonard is a very similar player. And that, once again, I do believe that 10 years from now we're going to look back and we're going to say... The San Antonio Spurs reign of terror across the NBA, where they pretty much were able to win a championship here and there whenever there were not any dominant teams. We're going to say it started when Kawhi Leonard led their rebellion against the super woke, super liberal Caucasian, <laughs> Caucasian head coach, Greg Popovich. What Kawhi Leonard really did was he acted as a whistleblower. Because Popovich has been able to create quite a cult of personality by alleging himself to be this progressive head coach who's at the forefront of societal change and he's so understanding of the plight of the so-called black man when in reality all he's ever been is an opportunist. He's someone who understands that a certain portion of your team is going to have to be comprised of black American players. He does not really relate well to the, to the so-called black man because he is a militaristic head coach himself. It's just that in this time period, you have to be far more conciliatory to the whims of the average modern day black athlete. So he has to adopt this persona of someone who you know, wants societal change, so on and so forth. When you look at his rosters, Greg Popovich has never, ever had a black American superstar player on his team before Kawhi Leonard. And if you want to say David Robinson, you could try to say that. But we know that David Robinson pretty much was on his last legs when Greg Popovich took over, number one. And number two, we know that David Robinson was and is a military Negro. Kawhi Leonard, Steven Jackson, they did not fit into the Spurs paradigm. They just didn't. And most of the other prominent black American players that play an important role on the Spurs were at the tail end of their careers and were therefore willing to comply to whatever Popovich wanted. That's what made them fit into the Spurs team framework so well. But once again, it's very obvious that there were some issues there between Popovich and Kawhi Leonard. And down the line, we are going to look back at this time period from about 2017 to 2019. And we're going to say that the Spurs downfall started when Kawhi Leonard rebelled against Greg Popovich. Especially if what happens is what I think is going to happen. That being that Greg Popovich is going to prep this female coach to take over for the Spurs and, and leave the team over to her. You're going to see the team take a precipitous downturn after that. But anyway, they're going to talk about it, and I'm going to chime in. Right now, this dude is the best basketball player on planet Earth. They get it to Leonard. Fall away for the win. Got it! Got it! I'm on the mission, mission. I'm on the mission, Watch mission. I'm on the mission, mission. mission. I'm on the, the mission, mission. The Raptors are the Eastern Conference fans.
New country, new coach, new cast of teammates, no problem for Kawhi Leonard. As the Raptors get ready to play in their first finals ever, the three-time All-Star continues to attract attention for other topics, including the fallout with the Spurs. His uncle, Dennis Robertson, talked to Chris Haynes of Yahoo Sports about the major issue between the two sides, saying, quote, they didn't believe Kawhi couldn't play, and that caused the lack of trust in us, and then us not believing in them. Well, let's be for real, Mr. Dennis Robertson. The real issue is that the San Antonio Spurs cognoscenti thought that they could bully Kawhi Leonard because they thought that he was so meek that he was weak. And this happens a lot in life. People mistake meekness for weakness. They believe that because you're mannerly, that you could be doldered. You could be pushed over, pushed around. And when you do stand up to people who think that they could push you around, there is going to have to be a major confrontation so that we can recalibrate things and hopefully help you understand how things are going to go and what we're not going to tolerate. So when those type of things occur, especially with an introvert like Kawhi Leonard, that's going to change things irreparably. Irreparably. Anytime a player says he's not capable of playing, you should believe him. Kawhi was just in too much pain to get out there. I think that the Spurs sometimes are a little bit too smart for their own good. I believe that they came to the conclusion, to the deduction, that Kawhi Leonard wanted out because he just never really fit in. He was so quiet and laid back that it really threw them off. Once again, being an introvert can be difficult in social settings because so many people spend most of their time trying to play the amateur psychologist. They want to get into your head, figure out what makes you tick so that maybe they can discern and decipher how to manipulate you. And when you're a Kawhi Leonard, who's pretty much a simple guy, he seems to just want to work out, play basketball, play with his daughter, go to the baseball game. <laughs> When you're a guy like that, you don't want to be bothered with people who are trying to act as if they're smarter than they actually are. You just want to play the game. And I think that the Spurs, they grabbed on so hard that he fought to get away. And that happens in various types of relationships, whether it's professional, personal, etc. The harder you try to grab onto someone, oftentimes it's going to result in the harder they're going to pull away. Believe him. And after that, the relationship can recover and we decided... We had to move on. For more, let's get you back to first take. When his uncle says that the relationship could not recover, he's referring to when they sick Tony Parker and Mano Ginobili on Kawhi. When something like that happens, what that means is that there can no longer be any trust. There can no longer be any type of, of a dynamic in a team framework between your best player and your team captains. So therefore, you have to go. I mean, you just have to leave. All right, that was Kawhi's business and career strategist Dennis Robertson with some strong words for the San Antonio Spurs telling Yahoo Sports that it was a lack of trust. Stephen A. Smith, how do you think the Spurs look with Kawhi in the finals? They look very bad. That's how they look. They look like a team that, that has not moved forward in the way that they would like to make people think that they moved forward. And when I say moved forward, I'm not talking about from an organizational perspective. I'm talking about from an ideological perspective. They don't understand how to deal with today's athlete. So it will be interesting to see how things transpire with Lonnie Walker and some of the other young black players that they've drafted. We'll see what happens. As I've stated, normally Popovich prefers to work with European players or non-American black players because I believe that he thinks that they're more compliant. I think they look very bad today. Um, and it's not because Kawhi took the sent Toronto Raptors to the finals. It's not because, you know, um, he would have done that for the Spurs, because we don't know, even if he were in San Antonio. Uh, we don't know if the Spurs, we know that the Spurs would have went deep into the playoffs, but we don't know if they would have made it to the conference finals or if they would have gotten past the Warriors for the NBA finals. We don't. Let me say this, Stephen A. Smith. The last time that we saw Kawhi Leonard on the basketball floor with the Spurs in the playoffs, they were in the process of giving the 2017 Warriors one of the greatest teams of all time, arguably the greatest team of all time, the fight of their lives. They were up 23 points in Golden State and Kawhi Leonard was cooking everybody. That series, in my view, was at the very best going to be a seven game victory for the Golden State Warriors because they had no answer for Kawhi Leonard whatsoever. They were getting their asses wazazaz up in that game one. So I don't think that it's that far fetched to believe that were Kawhi Leonard still in San Antonio and fully a believer, fully immersed in the culture of the San Antonio Spurs and feeling as if 
that it was one for all, all for one, that they would have beaten this year's Golden State Warriors because the Warriors were there to be had. If there was another very good to great team in the Western Conference, I think that they, they may have taken the Warriors out. It would have been tough. Even without KD, it would have been very tough. But I think that a Kawhi Leonard-led Spurs team, say going against the, the Golden State Warriors, hypothetically speaking, in the, in the third round in the conference finals, they probably would have beat the Warriors in six games. Know that, but he clearly would have been a better, he gave them a better chance. But when you have a guy who is universally recognized as one of the top five players in basketball at the time, uh, whose defense... I've always said that Kawhi is top four, and I've been saying this for the past four or five years now, that he was one of the top four players in the NBA. There are only four superstars in the NBA, and that has pretty much been the case since 2015. And that's LeBron James, Kevin Durant, Stephen Curry, Kawhi Leonard. Different people are going to order the players in a different way, depending on what they value, what the overall hierarchy is in the NBA of, of superstar players. But for the past five years, the NBA has only had four superstars. Once again, a superstar to me is a player who not only can be dominant at the very least on one end of the floor, you also have to be at the very worst, average to above average on defense. Stephen Curry, despite how much he gets lambasted, is not a bad defensive player. He's at worst average. In my view, he's an above average defensive player. When you're a Stephen Curry and you have to, you have to try to defend a Damian Lillard or a Russell Westbrook in open space, or even a Chris Paul, a James Harden, or whoever it is who they try to get switched out on Stephen Curry, you have to understand, not only do they want to get Stephen Curry switched out on the pick, on the pick and roll because he might not be the strongest defender per se physically, they want to get him switched out on the pick and roll so that they can weaken his legs and hopefully you know, detract from his efficiency and proficiency as a three-point shooter. So, so it's not just about how allegedly bad he is on the defensive end. It's also an attempt to wear him down because they know that he's the most impactful offensive player in the league, especially once he gets it going. So once again, my definition of a superstar player is not only a player who is dominant on one end of the floor, preferably the offensive end, but on the defensive end is in the range of dominant to above average. Stephen Curry, according to the metrics, is an above average defensive player. Kawhi Leonard has pretty much been an above average to good, maybe even very good offensive player up until this season where he's turned into a great offensive player. And one can even make the case that he was a great offensive player in his last healthy season in San Antonio. We know what LeBron James has been offensively, defensively. You no, know, he's been average, above average when he's wanted to be. Kevin Durant has been exceptional on both ends of the floor for the most part. So those are the four guys. And also, they must have led their team to a championship at least once and won at least one regular season MVP and or one finals MVP. And when you put all those ingredients into the bowl, there's only four guys in the league who've done that. So to me, it's not that difficult to figure out who the superstar players in the NBA are. And it's played out going all the way back to 2012. Since 2012, there's been a combination of those four players in the finals, unerringly. 2012, it was LeBron and KD. In 2013, it was LeBron and Kawhi. 2014, LeBron and Kawhi. 2015, Stephen, Stephen LeBron. 2016, Stephen LeBron. 2017, Steph LeBron and KD. 2018, Steph LeBron and KD. 2019, Steph and Kawhi. So... It is what it is. It's pretty easy to figure out. Surreal, whose offense had matured and had grown, uh, and clearly it had the kind of impact that we allude to in terms of what he was doing for them before he went down in game one of that conference finals when Zsa Zsa Pajulia undercut him. And you have his uncle saying the things that he said. I mean, let me, let, let me just, Max, let me just read it again. I think it just became a lack of trust they didn't believe Kawhi couldn't play. And that caused a lack of trust in us and then us not believing in them. And let the record show that at the time that this situation was transpiring, Stephen A. Smith, in his daily telecast on first take, was habitually taking the side of the San Antonio Spurs. Anytime a player says he's not capable of playing, you should believe him. Why would Kawhi just stop playing all of a sudden? He's a competitor. 
Well, according to the Spurs and also according to you, Stephen A. Smith, Kawhi Leonard stopped playing because he wanted out of the Spurs. That was according to you guys' theory. And then it says sometimes you get these team doctors telling you what you can and cannot do. And Kawhi was just in too much pain to get out there. When you hear something like that and you see an organization, first class, gold standard, Greg Allegedly. Popovich, we all know the phenomenal coach, you know, phenomenal human being. Well, we know that he's a phenomenal coach. We know R.C. Buford, highly, highly respected executive in the NBA. When Adrian Wojnarowski was one of the people that wrote this story in March of 2018, when they had that players-only meeting with players imploring him to play, obviously they were questioning the severity of his injury. Beyond that, what they were questioning is his integrity as an athlete. And once, you, <laughs> once you've been in the trenches with guys for five, six, seven years, and they have the nerve to walk up to you and question your integrity as an athlete. You know, we can no longer respect each other after that. Because we've been in the trenches together. We've been in the foxhole together. We fought in the alleys together. And you're going to question me like this? I cannot respect you anymore as a person because that means that you're willing to forego the seven years of precedent for what you've been told by another person. That means that we don't have a real relationship and we never have. Where did they get that from? And where was Greg Popovich and R.C. Buford to stop it? I don't know the answer to those questions. Why would they be there to stop it when they're the ones who started it? I'm simply saying that by mere virtue of the fact that we have to ask that question, that Kawhi Leonard clearly was asking that question. His family was clearly asking that question, Max. That is not a good look for an organization as world class as the San Antonio Spurs to the San Antonio Spurs, they have one chance, and it's a very slim chance that they might be able to hit a gold mine again and find a young black American player on the level of a Kawhi Leonard and build him up in a different way this time. Not trying to intimidate him, play mind games, etc. Just let him be him. And I thought that it was very telling after the Toronto Raptors won the world title against the Golden State Warriors while they were having their interviews during the parade when it was Kawhi Leonard's turn to speak. He thanked Nick Nurse for letting him be him. He said, thank you to Nick Nurse for letting me do what I do. And we have a championship. I thought that that was a subliminal shot at the San Antonio Spurs, who are a little bit too conscious of their system. Yeah, that would be something you would expect from an organization that's devoid of winning, that's devoid of any kind of culture, tradition, or whatever. You don't expect that from the San Antonio Spurs. And the fact that that happened, on the watch of Popovich, on the watch of R.C. Buford, the owner Peter Holt. This is a first-class organization. For that stuff to be said right now, with Uncle Dennis coming out and publicly stating that to Yahoo Sports the way that he did, that is not a good look for the San Antonio Spurs. There's no way around that. Greg Popovich and the San Antonio Spurs almost always look great on and off the court. What? According to you, because they puppet a lot of your dribble, your super liberal nonsense. That's why they almost always quote unquote look great. Because that's what liberals and super liberals are about. They're about optics, how things look, as opposed to how things are. Coaches commenting on social issues, whether it's an issue of how that team and how that franchise is run to their success on the court, not giving in to the strategy that I sometimes recommend that you hate, Stephen A., tanking for multiple years the process for picks, but always competing, every year competing their hearts out, putting together the best product they can and going for it every year. Well, they do have a great coaching staff and a tremendous developmental program to build up their players. I give them a lot of credit for that. It's amazing. It's, it's laudable. It's commendable. And they deserve it when they show up, which is almost all the time. No one's perfect. And here the San Antonio Spurs were imperfect. They made a miscalculation. Look, Kawhi Leonard was hurt. And I want to read for you. And by the way, think about the way Toronto has managed it. There was load management. That's one of the reasons, even though he's hurt right now, he's able to play with as much energy as he can muster on both ends of the court. And they're in the finals, right? They, they managed the load for him. Okay. This from Michael Singer, USA Today, March 23rd, 2018, right? Yeah, days after that meeting. 
after yeah. both Danny Green and Rudy Gay refuted the report that the meeting, the team meeting that was reported to San Antonio Spurs, after they refuted the report, which revolved around getting answers from Leonard about his injury, was contentious. It's hard to overlook the tone of Tony Parker's comments in regard to his own rehab. I want to stop right there. Who got traded to Toronto along with Kawhi Leonard? Danny Green. Danny Green. Interesting. So Danny Green sticks up for Kawhi Leonard. Yeah, he was the other black American player who had to go. He was thinking too much for himself. We got to pack their bags. Once again, the super liberal Caucasian operates according to the concept or the ideology known as the white man's burden. The white man's burden philosophy basically is, I know best, I'm here to civilize you, you beast of a Negro. <laughs> this is what most of the liberal movements have been about over the course of the last 100 plus years. Certain Caucasians who have decided that they're going to act as a guardian angel over the so-called black community and, and raise them up like Mr. Drummond did Arnold and Willis on different strokes. And therefore you have to be extremely thankful for that. And that, that was one of the main reasons why Popovich was so offended by Kawhi because his attitude is, it's not your hard work that made you the player that you were. It was my coaching. And to this day, people still act as if it's Greg Popovich that's the reason why Kawhi Leonard is the player that he is. If that's the case, then build another Kawhi. It's like what Jay-Z said about Dame Dash when they had that split at Rockefeller. When Dame Dash was talking about how he made Jay-Z. Jay-Z said, well, if you made me, make another me. It's very simple. He's gone in the Leonard trade, too. Had a terrible series, by the way. I hope he can recover in the finals, because I think Danny Green's a really good player. Um, here's Danny Green is a great role player that you overrate. Tony Parker's quote on Kawhi's injury. I've been through it. It was rehab for me for eight months. Same kind of injury, but mine was a hundred times worse, but the same kind of injury. You just try to stay positive. You never say things like that. You never speak about the next man's injury because you don't know about their body. Besides that, the role that Kawhi Leonard was going to play upon his return was going to be way different than anything that was ever expected of Tony Parker. Tony Parker, <laughs> he rehabbed his, his torn quad and he was expected to come back and give the Spurs a good 20 minutes to 25 minutes per game. They would have expected Kawhi Leonard to come back and be one of the top three to four players in the NBA. Two totally different things. In, that's everyone, it was reported as a thinly veiled shot at Kawhi Leonard. Stephen A, do you believe Parker would just come out and say that without Popovich's blessing? Of course not. I don't even have to answer that question in the fashion you asked it. Max, I can give you one better. Steven Jackson came on national television, not just our show, but, but Fox as well, and said, there's no way on earth that Tony Parker says such a thing without the okay of Greg Popovich. And for those who don't know... No, not the okay upon the demand of Greg Popovich. There's a big difference. It wasn't like Tony Parker and Mano Ginobili went to Pop and said, Pop, is it okay if we go to the media and say this? I believe that Greg Popovich called them into the office and said, look, you guys got to challenge this dude and challenge him through the media because he's not letting me manipulate his mind like how I'm accustomed to. So we have to go about this through different channels. Jackson, Steven Jackson is a guy that helped Popovich and the Spurs capture a championship. He's very familiar with the culture, and he is more than qualified. Yeah, their culture is cult-like. Speak about anything pertaining to the San Antonio Spurs organization. And Stephen Jackson is my dude. But Stephen A, he does have really an with, he really does have Stephen Jackson is my dude. We listen to Wu-Tang together. Just, just, just so we are up front about it, he does seem to have an axe to grind with Popovich. Like, he yeah, wasn't happy about some things that went down. No, he, well, he's upset because Steven Jackson thought that he was a better player than Mano Ginobili. But Steven Jackson is one of those guys who, I mean, thank God he grew to be six foot eight or however tall he is. Because if he was five foot eleven, he'd be in, he'd be in some maximum security prison somewhere looking stupid. Like, I mean, no disrespect to the brother, but fortunately for him, he won the genetic lottery. A liar, not a liar. No. Right. So, so the point is that that these guys were sicked on Kawhi in a public relations kind of way. Kawhi Leonard, who was their finals MVP for the play he had on LeBron. Now, I think Kawhi owes Popovich a debt of gratitude too, the way Tom Brady owes it to Bill Belichick. 
Brady and Kawhi would have been great players no matter who was their coach, but they wouldn't have been the level to where they got eventually without their coaches, I believe. Well, that's hypothetical, especially in the form of a Kawhi Leonard. Basketball players are normally self-made. The job of a coach is to be able to bring out the best within the player. Now, certain people might say the San Antonio Spurs shooting coach is who made Kawhi Leonard the great shooter that he is. No, Kawhi Leonard's hard work is what made him the shooter that he is. A shooting coach can only show you proper technique. You have to drill that technique over and over and over again and hopefully become the best shooter that you can be. Because once again, I've never seen an off the dribble wing player in the San Antonio Spurs system anywhere near as proficient as a Kawhi Leonard. So the Spurs may feel, and Popovich may feel a certain kind of way, like, come on, as though maybe he's an ingrate in some way, like we built you up into this as much as Kawhi obviously did it himself. Nevertheless, the way they handled it, it seems to me was wrong, and I think Kawhi is proving that right now. What crystallizes this, just to cap this conversation, Max Kellerman, what crystallizes this more than anything is that it made me recall how before Kawhi was traded, how news reports had circulated that Greg Popovich went out to see Kawhi once the season was over to have a conversation with him before they elected to trade him. And at that time, we were told that Kawhi Leonard told him to his face, I want out. I want to be gone. So even the great, great Popovich did it, couldn't convince him to stay on board. One has to wonder why somebody as credible, as phenomenal of a champion and a leader as Greg Popovich couldn't convince Kawhi to stay. And then you heard... Because he's the one who convinced Kawhi to leave. I mean, hello. Even in a relationship, there, there are certain moments that occur where there's no turning back. And you have to be mature enough to recognize that. There's no way in the world that you're going to try to embarrass me through the media and, and then have the nerve to think that because you fly over to my home that I'm supposed to accept your apology. Yes, I can accept it on its face. But <laughs> forgiveness is multi-layered. Some people's sign of forgiveness is that everything goes back to the way it was. And other people's sign of forgiveness is that they shake your hand and they don't punch you in the face for what you did. So you cannot always expect someone to forgive you in the mode that you want them to forgive you or that you hope that they'll forgive you. Because for the most part, when people do apologize, it's normally because there's still something that, that they want to get from that person. It's not on general principles. They were on, he was bored with San Antonio and wanted a different venue, different level of interest, excitement, etc., etc. But obviously, listening to Uncle Dennis, it is clear that they were feeling a bit salty about the San Antonio Spurs organization. And you don't feel salty about the San Antonio Spurs organization unless you feel salty about Greg Popovich because Greg Popovich is that organization. He's the face of the franchise. He's the leader. R.C. Buford might be the GM, but he's working for Greg Popovich. Make no mistake Popovich, about it. Popovich, one of the greatest feel, who ever did it, but he's you not You feel perfect. that way? Yep. You feel that way? It's got to be about, to some degree, about Greg Popovich. All right, well, Kawhi Leonard absolutely proving a point here. We can see him in the NBA Finals. Okay, so brothers, that's basically it on that. We'll see how things go for Mr. Kawhi Leonard and the San Antonio Spurs from here. Kawhi has already won his second championship with the Toronto Raptors. I'm not quite sure if he's going to depart from Toronto and sign with the LA Clippers. If I were him, I would sign for another year with an option just to see how things go. There's no need for Kawhi to sign a long-term deal necessarily. He's not even 30 yet. I do think that he should attempt to maybe stretch out his tenure in Toronto, especially since he's the proverbial bell of the ball. And if he's able to win at least one more championship in the next two years, he can always go out to the Clippers. The Clippers will always be out there waiting for him. He can sign there as a 29 or 30-year-old and live out the rest of his days you know, in his home state if that's what he so chooses. But we'll see what happens. Peace.